So good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you all know, this is going to be an interesting talk for sure. Um, it is uh, titled Sense Without Sight. Our next speaker is Sai. And without too much ado, please give him a big round of applause. And he's going to be here shortly. Um, so, you might be thinking that I am Daredevil. Uh, I'm not, sadly. Well, probably better for my health. Um, and I do not have any magic powers, unfortunately. I just have extra disabilities um, that make it harder for me. Um, nevertheless, One, two back, yay, live demos. Do, 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 do. Where did that? No, I'm not going to fall off. There. Because you're like right at, you're going to be falling soon. Uh, nevertheless, I can walk around without my cane. It's a little hard to precisely target it, but as you can see, I don't fall off stage. Um, so, um, just to make this clearer, uh, I am not faking this. And the way you can tell is I have a blindfold on. This blindfold is for real. This is a sleep mask. Um, I can't see anything right now. So you don't need to ask how good my sight is or why, um, because I can't see. Um, the issue that I have is light blindness. Um, basically, I can see uh, if it's really dark, and I can't see if it's really uh, bright. Um, and lights that are as bright as uh, the um, as, as these lights here. Uh, actually hurt my eyes kind of right now um, through the blindfold. Um, so I definitely would not be able to do this talk with my eyes open and my glasses off. Um, I do a lot of different things. Blindness is not one of them. Uh, on my shirt, and my slides, and my website. There's all sorts of stuff that we can talk about. Uh, let's please talk about that stuff uh, and not the fact that I'm blind except during this talk or during my workshops uh, when you're, uh, it's okay to um, ask questions about that or talk about that. Exception is if you want to work with me on stuff or if you have feedback, I welcome that. But uh, let's talk about something else, like uh, how, to, um, how to analyze a few terabytes of court data. Uh, anyway, um, I have assistance for this talk. One of them is uh, what I'm going to be calling the helpful asshole, uh, aka my herald. You're welcome. Come up. Um, uh, I also have Bit. Bit, where are you? Good. Um, and I have someone running the slides for me because obviously I can't see my own slides. Uh, fortunately for you, that means I'm not giving the talk like this. Do to do to do what Deva just talked about, la la la. Um, yeah. Uh, it is OK to make sound, if anything. It's um, helpful, because I can, I can hear where you are. Um, so you might wonder how I walked onto stage without my cane. I'm going to go over that in a second. But first, uh, the cane is really, really useful. Um, so it gives me a number of things. So for instance, right here, you m might not notice it, but there is a difference in the floor. There is this carpeted section here, and there's this wood section here. Right? Um, now, if I just brush this with my feet, 
I can feel it, and that's how I walked on stage. Uh, but if I do it with my cane, hear that whack? You can say yes in response to questions. Hear that whack? Yeah. Um, so even if I'm lightly walking, I just keep that uh, at, a, at a known degree, and I can easily walk alongside of it. Um, I can also feel the texture. So one thing you may not notice, um, but uh, you may as well try now, is that the texture of the carpet under your feet, under, under your feet, the people who are live in this audience, uh, I don't know about you people at home, sorry. Uh, but this stage I have checked out, and it is smoother um, from the front of stage to the back of stage, and is smoother from the right of stage to the left of stage. And I believe that's true for most of the floor in the audience, but um, it's made out of separate squares. Um, so some of them may be oriented a different way. So feel with your feet, for real, like right now. Um, feel and feel if you can, uh, see if you can feel which way it's smooth and which way it's rough. Uh, with the cane, uh, when I drag it like this, it's smoother. When I drag it like this, it resists. And especially if I'm holding it like this with a firmer grip, this is nice and smooth. And then this way, it sort of resists. It bends the cane a little bit. Um, what else? There's sound. So um, something that I can do really well with the cane uh, that's hard to do with my feet, but I can. So I can do that. But I can also do this. So that, those two textures sound completely different, right? In fact, here the sage is not hollow underneath. Here it's firmer, and then suddenly it's echoey. Right? Um, so that helps me tell uh, just sort of what ground I'm on. Uh, similarly, actually, in the front of the stage, so. And then your, oops, sorry about your mic. You know, the stage edge, it's really sort of resistant, whereas there, it's got much more of an echo to it. Uh, one thing this is very useful for is echolocation. Uh, I am not a bat, uh, but it is the same principle. Um, there are some people who are much, much, much better than I am about echolocation. I'm not that good. Uh, but what I can hear and what you can hear and what you're going to try to hear right now is the size of the room. So I'm going to whack the stage with my cane. What I want you to do is, while I'm doing it, close your eyes. Uh, you're not going to miss anything. The slide's not going to change. I'm just here. Um, so close your eyes and move your head from side to side as I do it. Uh, and you can even sort of look behind you. And listen for the sound of the, the, the size of the room. You'll be able to hear how large the room is around you. Um, and you'll hear uh, the echo of my cane from the back of the room. Uh, kill the PA for a sec. Right? PA? Okay, um, so that's a, a simple version. Um, another version is uh, 
these stage curtains? Uh, how do I not face plant into them? Well, there's a few ways. For one, uh, I can just run into it with my cane. Uh, that's a speaker. Sorry about that. And that is curtain. Um, nice and soft. Um, there are several other things about this I'm going to show in a bit. Um, but also, if I'm, sorry about the speaker. If I'm walking through this and I walk through the side curtain, sort of behind, Oh, they've added extra stuff to the stage. Yay. It absorbs the sound when I uh, am tapping near it. Hmm? Yeah. Um, and there's... Yeah, there's that. Um, Bit, where are you? Looks like you're lost. Do you need some help? Sorry? Do you need some help? It looks like you're lost. Ah, uh, thank you, dear angel. Um, no, I do know where I am. Um, so, uh, my dear signal angel, uh, or my herald, um, is representing uh, that person uh, who is trying to be helpful to me uh, several times a day and kind of annoys me um, or ranges from annoying to actually dangerous. I obviously know where I am because I'm navigating the stage just fine and you saw me walk on without even my cane, so thank you, but no, I don't need directions. Um, Bit. Thank you. Howdy. Howdy. So, with uh, someone who's right next to you like this, how do I, how can I tell that he's there, right? I'm not touching him with a cane, although I can. <laughs> and I do. So if you, if you, if I whack you in the ankle, uh, sorry, but that's how I can tell you're there, especially if you're standing really quiet. Um, it's really hard to tell that someone's there, in a, especially in a crowd like this. Forget it. Uh, so yes, I'm going to hit you in the ankle. Too bad. Uh, that's how I can tell you're there. But in this distance, I can feel his body heat radiating. Um, so from about this distance away, yeah. This distance. I can definitely feel it on the back of my uh, arm. There, there's his shoulder, there's his cheek. Um, so actually, I would like you to try doing that. So um, to turn to the person who's next to you, uh, ask their consent first. Uh, I have asked Bits consent for everything that uh, we're going to do. Uh, and what I would like you to do is put your hand up next to them. Um, try to almost touch their cheek without quite touching their cheek. And then deliberately do so. So almost, but not quite, just by the heat, with your eyes closed, um, and then trade off. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Another place that I feel this is on walls. This wall, for instance, uh, the front of the stage. There's actually wind coming through these little uh, holes in them. Uh, that wind is colder than the ambient temperature of the room. Um, if I get my arm really close to it, then at about this distance, I feel the cold air from it. And then at about that distance, there's actually sort of a sheet wind uh, that, that uh, is really tight close to the wall. And then there, my hair, the, the hairs on the back of my arm tingle. And there, uh, I can touch it. Um, so we have people uh, who are in the audience on scooters and such, and they're gonna drive through the aisles. I want you to close your eyes and see if you can feel the wind generated uh, by them moving past you. And also the sound. Some of them are louder than others. So you feel how when they pass you, there's a breeze in their wake. Um, this happens a lot in Congress. There are lots of people on scooters and hoverboards and motorized couches or whatever. Gods know what people motorize around here. Um, uh, or someone just walking really fast, like me. Uh, they all generate a wind in their wake. Another thing you'll notice uh, in Congress, um, there's these nice tunnels. Uh, so for instance, from CCL to uh, Hall 2, there's this tunnel through the glass hall. Uh, when you walk through it, the wind characteristics of the room completely change. You start feeling a crosswind. So if I'm walking this way and the tunnel is on my right, and then suddenly I, I will feel a crosswind from the tunnel um, that is colder and um, wasn't there before. Similarly with the wall, there's ju it just sort of stops. Um, next. Hmm? Phones? Oh, yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, so um, uh, everyone, please close your eyes. And I do mean everyone. Oh, not uh, the audio angels uh, or the video angels. Um, but everyone in the audience, please close your eyes. If your phone number ends with the number one, please uh, move your arms in such a way as to make some wind. If your phone number doesn't end in the number one, point to the person who's making some wind. I can't see you, so I'm not going to judge you. So do you feel that? Yes? No? How about people whose phone number ends in one stop? People whose phone number ends in four? Just make some wind, like wave your arm in front of you. Feel that? Try pointing to them. Well, not the people who went in before. You can point to yourselves, I guess. People whose number ends in seven. Okay. So. That's movement. Um, when people move by you, it generates wind. When there's a tunnel, when there's an air differential, like the air under this stage is colder, and that's why there's a wind out of it. Um, actually, No 
know what? Let me let me hold your hand. Let me get that for you. Ah, uh, the text. No, you good? Yeah, let go sure? of me, please. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. more stuff. So down here, um, if I open this door uh, and I walk past it, there's this crosswind that I was mentioning a second ago about the tunnel. So here, there's just sort of flat to my right. And then here, I walk a little bit forward. Suddenly, there's this crosswind from that opening. Um, similarly, when people were biking by you, you could tell that. Um, similarly, if I crack my cane, I don't know if you can hear that very well, but try. Hear how there's, there's a sound off to that side that it sort of ends at the door. And then if I knock my cane here, there's a little reflection through that door. And yes, I do know how to close a door. I know, amazing. Um, similarly, for these walls, um, I can feel the, that I'm close to the wall or not. Tingly, not tingly. Um, what's next? Hmm? Ah, yes. So, um, uh, uh, Oh, yeah, you've added more you move these random chairs for crap. You? So you can... Uh, no, would please... Would that be helpful? Sometimes that would be helpful, but at the moment, uh, not so much, because if you were to move it when I've already found where it is, um, then uh, suddenly it wouldn't be there anymore, and uh, it'd be hard for me to orient. Um, one of the things that is difficult about being blind is you have to have quite a lot of memory. Um, so the things that you probably don't notice uh, because you outsource your memory um, is how much uh, of the environment around you changes. So uh, ask a blind person, they probably hate construction work. Um, <laughs> Uh, I do. Uh, um, and if I try to go sit down, for instance, for that matter, hmm. there's a chair. This had moved a lot. It'd be really hard for me to take a seat. Um, now, he doesn't smell that bad. Um, <laughs> But uh, some people have a pretty significant uh, smell because they're wearing perfume or cologne or Axe uh, or something like that. Um, if you've ever been in a public transit terminal and you've taken the elevator, maybe you know the distinct 
aroma of uh, the elevator in public transit. Um, definitely lets you know you're in New York City. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, next group, start moving. Um, so, my assistants in the audience are, are moving through the aisles with something uh, in their hands. What I want you to do is close your eyes, smell, feel the wind current, smell what is it, point to them, see if you can point exactly where they are. Mm, yummy orange. Um, so now I'm really hungry. So if I'm walking past a coffee shop, for instance, has a distinct smell. It smells like coffee, shockingly enough. Uh, a drugstore smells like alcohol and cleaning solution. Uh, a clothing store smells like leather and this weird perfume that they put in clothing stores for some reason. Um, I, I don't know why, but they do. Uh, and if you ever visit one, hopefully you'll notice it now. Uh, so, let's see, next. Hmm? All uh, right. Uh, uh, dear asshole, you know your lines? I have a special line. Bit. Do you have your blindfold on? Uh, no. Please do. Uh, well, I don't. Uh, I don't have an extra one. <laughs> Did you move his blindfold also? No. Yeah. Should I lend you mine? Ah, kid sprite. Mmm. Ow. Yeah. So, um, if you are going to try to help someone navigate, first off, say, would you like some help? Well, I'm pretty confused now, so yes, yes, please. <laughs> um, so don't just, you know, randomly assault people. Uh, just because I have a cane does not mean it's cool to assault me. Uh, then if you're going to touch them, do so with the back of your hand. This way he knows I'm not just randomly grabbing him and yanking him around. It's really annoying. So I can offer you my arm. We can walk. Let's go have a seat. There we go, there's your seat. Now, some people will like grab the hand and put it down. Uh, instead, I can just say, here's the chair. Ta-da. Um, uh, so follow me for a sec. Um, could I have a sidewalk beep in the back? So, um, let's do a little crack. So, do you hear the back of the room? Where that is? Can I do it once more? There. Yeah, I think it's in front of me, or a bit to the right, maybe. Um, so, one thing you really don't want to do uh, when someone is possibly trying to figure out their orientation is to randomly come up to them and grab them um, and pull them. Um, dear asshole? Yes, please. Can I help you? Can I take you somewhere? Uh, 
Let's pretend that you think he wants to go down the stairs. He thinks he wants to walk towards the audience. Let's walk towards the audience a little bit. So here, the stairs are right this way? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, but, but you're Pause for the a stairs, second. so. Uh, no, not really, not really not. I'm pretty sure you are. <laughs> No, no, you look lost. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go elsewhere. Now yeah. I don't uh, fuck I'm off, going. please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, but can you please point to the back of the room? Yeah, not quite, is it? Um, uh, this is what happens when you mess with someone's orientation. Uh, please don't be that asshole. Um, if you want to be helpful, you can be helpful, you can be nice. So I, shall I lead you back to the chairs now? Would you like a hand? They hold you, you don't hold them. Uh, and then you can lead them back to the chairs. There we go. How was he? May I have my blindfold back? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you can tell this is improvised. Um, and here I am again walking without my cane on the crack. Um, so that's not just a party trick, um, as I'll show in a sec. Next. Yeah. Right. So, um, some of you may have the response of thinking, oh, wow, so I can walk across a stage, or talk, um, or make decisions. Um, I wish I were kidding, but uh, that does happen pretty regularly. Um, can we clear the, the stuff off the stage, please? Um, so instead of that, um, I'd like to show you something that actually does involve a little bit of skill. Um, uh, namely, about a decade worth of Aikido. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Aikido is a martial art from Japan. Um, Anna? Uh, so, I've spent about five years or so learning to use a uh, cane. Uh, Anna has spent well more than that uh, doing Aikido and is a second, level, second degree black belt. I am not. Uh, However, I'm wearing a blindfold, and she is not. Uh, so what I want to demonstrate for you is how I can tell uh, that she's about to grab my hand. So there is the sound of the feet on the ground making this sort of sound. There is the hand approaching me, the wind. There, the vibration as her hips sort of rotate towards me with a nice little fist attempt here. Um, there I can tell she's starting to lean back and there I put her to the ground. So again, so sound, movement, airflow, heat, here's a nice little head, vibration, wrist, the crook of the wrist, Full speed. So um, the blindfold hasn't come off. I'm not this isn't magic. And again, I'm not daredevil. Uh, I just can't see. I didn't get extra super special hearing powers. Uh, my my hearing is pretty good, but it's no better than. Uh, the average person, I'm, it's actually a lot worse in the rain, so that thing isn't a, really a thing. Um, 
so just to, to prove that it doesn't just work in this sort of deliberately set up uh, special thing, Anna is going to just attack me however she wants. Uh, and I'm going to throw her around a bit. <laughs> Note that I can still focus on her. I can still pin her if I want. <laughs> Hi. I got to go with that one. And no, I didn't tell them what to do in advance. That's real. And yes, I am a little bit out of breath. Uh, it's been a while since I actually exercised. Uh, well enough. And again, I'm still facing you, right? I haven't forgotten where this line is between the wood and the carpet. And in fact, I can knock it with my ring sometimes. Against the wall is a little better uh, to generate a nice echo sound. So if you want to not be an asshole, uh, please remember, first off, ask. Uh, I may not want your help uh, or need it. And what you think may be helpful to me, maybe, probably is, completely wrong. So listen to what I say. And if I say, yeah, I would like you to please lead me to X, uh, that does not mean grab my arm and start dragging me to X. Uh, I prefer to follow people by sound, so I'm just going to tell you to scuff your feet when you walk. So I can follow you by sound, or to just keep talking. Uh, some people to prefer to follow by hand bit. So, if it comes up and I want directions to stage center. What, so? Lead me to stage center, please. Go. Ta-da. Not that hard. Um, if you are going to touch someone, like bit here, unless you know, you've invited them to attack you because you're doing an Aikido exercise. Don't just randomly grab them and yank them around. Uh, touch them, say, hi, my name is Sai, would you like some help? Hi, Sai, I would, thank you very much. Uh, and then you can offer, or you can say, what would you like? Uh, are you lost? I'm not. You thanks, might be. I'd like to go to your place, thanks. <laughs> mm, maybe later. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, one important thing to note, uh, when people do uh, 
simulations of disabilities. They sometimes try to do it um, by just pretending to be blind or pretending to be in a wheelchair or something. Like you sit in a wheelchair for a day and then you think, oh, it must be so hard to be in a wheelchair because my arms hurt so much and I couldn't figure out how to get to the second floor. Well, that's because you've done it for a day and someone who actually uses a wheelchair has done it for probably years and years and years and has much better arms than you do. Uh, and they know where uh, everything is and know how to get around. Similarly, I know how to get around uh, without using my eyes. You don't. Uh, if you just try to put a blindfold on uh, and grab a cane, or let alone those uh, blind experience museums where they uh, just put a blindfold on you and don't give you a cane and have you walk around, Actually, I went to one once, and they wanted to take my cane away from me. Uh, <laughs> I was like, hell no, that ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I actually lent it to, to my partner, so that my partner could uh, not feel afraid of the surroundings of like accidentally walking into something, accidentally walking off, uh, well, not a stage, but off a step or something. Um, so you don't know what you don't know. Most of the things I've, I've showed you in this talk, you probably have never realized that they're even a thing. Uh, like, have you noticed how many different floorings there are in the mess hall? How many different textures there are? Uh, how many different sounds there are? The smells, the wind, uh, the ceiling heights, uh, you probably don't pay attention to that. I do. Um, and without the experience, you're just not going to be able to learn that. Um, that said, uh, I am teaching workshops. You're welcome to come to them if I still have the energy to run them. Uh, one is going to be right after this talk, and the rest to be determined. Um, my volunteers, could you please come up on stage if you're willing to be on camera? Uh, this talk is complicated. Um, if you ask the 35C3 uh, content crew and the VOC crew and uh, everyone else, uh, it's kind of a pain to run something like this because uh, I'm doing stereo recording. Uh, that doesn't affect you in the audience live because the PAs are mono. Uh, but hopefully, those of you listening at home, you've been listening to this with uh, stereo headphones on. And hopefully, you'll hear it from my perspective, what it's like when I crack the cane. And you can hear the echo in the room. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take a bow, please. Right, thank you, Sai, for a very interesting talk. Uh, we have some time for questions. Go to the Q&A slide, please. Uh, so if you have questions and uh, you're OK with being on camera uh, and possibly being asked to come on stage so I can answer your question, depending on what your question is, please queue up to the camera that's on stage right. And otherwise, there's cameras, or there's, yeah, sorry, there's, the there's microphone. microphones. We can also do just plain questions. If you don't want to come on stage, you can just ask yeah. your question from any one of the four microphones um, in the room. Bit. So first question for microphone number two. Uh, which one is two? Um, it's which for, one it's, is, it's which for one the person the, asking. Which uh, one is the, the table two? one? Sorry? Which one is the one on stage right? Can um, I ask them on stage? Oh, um, let's see if they want to come on stage. I, I, I which which number? So microphone number two is N number two is number two is the microphone like in the. You want to come on stage? I, if I you don't want know to? yet. Sure. I just want to know if I can. No, no, I'm number two is in is front of you on the aisle, and number three behind there. Number one left left on the uh, on the aisle, and number four 
Right. Okay, so right. go so to number four if you're willing to be yeah, so, so on the, camera. Uh, could you please so bring the me my canes? Is right here. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the really impressive talk. Thank um, you. My question is um, the following. So when you, how, uh, I want to know how your uh, imagination works. So when someone says, uh, imagine a box, what's that you think of? Is that um, the, the material or how it sounds, how it feels, uh, just uh, how does it work? Uh, well, there I would actually go to my cognitive psychology talk that I gave at 27 C3. Uh, and a box is a category theoretic concept that has a prototype, possibly. Uh, it's like asking, uh, imagine a furniture. Hmm. Uh, imagine a box. Well, what kind of box? Is it a shipping box? Is it a, a box of mate that are those little crates that I walk into, etc.? cetera? Uh, they're all different kinds of boxes. Um, is it an elevator? Um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that kind of question. So maybe I got that incorrect. Um, but what I want to say is that um, when I try to, to think of, of something, I don't know, any idea, any project, plan, or uh -huh. et cetera, I imagine how it looks. So how, how, how I am at a certain place, how I, I don't know, for example, see a box if someone's talking about the box. Sure. So, uh, so my, uh, my brain works uh, like visually, creating visual mm -hmm. pictures. So um, I was interested in how, how that works for, for blind people. Uh, well, that depends on the blind person. Um, I have, um, I've never really had a visual thought process. Um, so when I've talked to people and asked them, what is it like to think for you? So if, if people in the audience think about this, if you're, if, you're t if you're imagining like what you did over the last day, try it, okay. Uh, Many people hear, uh, feel that as sort of a quasi-audio monologue that's it's like a voice in their head, except it's, it's their voice, it's not other voices. Um, uh, many people have it, like you have it, of a sort of visual experience. Uh, some people have it as scrolling text. Uh, could I get a clap for anyone who uh, has their uh, thoughts as text? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, I've met uh, like two or three people who have that. Uh, for me, it's purely abstract. Um, but if I want to think of a box, yes, I can think of a box. I can imagine it visually, I can imagine what it feels like, etc. Also, please remember, I can see in a dark light. I can't see here because uh, even looking up uh, is painful with my eyes closed under this blindfold there's enough light coming through that it hurts. Uh, I definitely would not be able to open my eyes. Um, and I could take my blindfold off temporarily, but that was because I was willing to tolerate some pain. Um, so if, if it's a dark room, then I can see just fine. So. Thank you. Sure. So the next question is from the internet, so they won't be able to come on stage. Yes, Signal Angel. Internet. Yes, uh, how do you feel about the app Be My Eyes? Be My Eyes. Um, it's actually not bad. Uh, there, there's uh, Be My Eyes, um, Tap Tap C, um, Be Specular, um, several for iPhone, which I've never used because I've got an Android. Uh, though iPhone, for what it's worth, uh, has, uh, and Mac products in general, have really excellent uh, support for blind people. Um, Tap Tap C is useful. Um, it's not as useful for me because at home, uh, like if I want to identify a can of soup or whatever, uh, I will just look at it with the lights down so I can see it myself. Uh, and it's too much of a pain to use if I'm out, like if I'm grocery shopping. That's uh, something that's a real pain to do. Uh, and an accessibility issue for those of you thinking about such things. Uh, if you only, uh, if you only support the uh, operation search uh, or the operation lookup and say, I walk into a grocery store, which I have done, shock, yeah, I know, uh, 
And they come up to me and say, hey, how can I help you? What do you want? I say, well, I don't know what I want. What do you have? I would like a savory snack that's vegetarian. What do you have? They're like, well, what do you want? <laughs> name it. And if I name it, they'll get it for me. Uh, but I, I, I don't know, especially if I'm in Germany. I have no idea what they sell here. Um, yet they still ask me that. Uh, um, so browsing is much harder. And with tap tap C and uh, with Be My Eyes and so forth, it's really for identifying a specific object. Um, uh, one thing that you may not be used to here, but in more barbaric countries, all the paper currency is the same size and has no distinguishing features. Uh, except for the next print run, because the American Federation for the Blind sued the US Treasury and won, so the next generation of bills, except for the $1 note, which the Treasury is not allowed to change by law, uh, but the next generation <laughs> Uh, will have blind accessibility features. Uh, here, they have different sizes. Uh, if you feel your euros, they have a little strip uh, on the edge of them. Um, and uh, some versions of them have little braille dots that you can tell what they are. Um, so that's, that's not as bad here. But yeah, uh, Be My Eyes is more useful for someone who's, who's blind at home as well. Another but question. it's a great app. Another question from microphone four. That's to the right of the stage. Uh, yep. They can ask from there, but if they want to come up. Uh, Thank you. You want to come up? Uh, ask first. Ask first. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to. Sorry for all the. For all um, the hey. Uh, so Howdy. It was um, very impressive how, my, how you pick up on all, on all these things that like, I normally don't. So I was really curious when you meet a new person, mm -hmm. uh, what do you pick up? Uh, what do you pick up? about them? Like, how do you assess the person? How do you know they're, like, interesting, attractive? Like, how do you? Because uh, I use well, visual cues for that, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to answer you assuming that I'm, I'm blind at the time. Uh, if they come up to me and say, how much can you see, then they're probably not a person I want to continue interacting with. <laughs> uh, if there's someone who comes up to me They've read my shirt about all sorts of different things that we can have a conversation about that's substantive. Uh, and they say, hey, uh, how would you like to implement liquid democracy? Or how do you make a nonlinear writing system? Or something than that, like that. Then they're more likely an interesting person. Uh, or if they introduce themselves and are nice, uh, how do you evaluate people? Like, you, you can't evaluate them just by what they look like. Um, I can tell your age and your approximate gender and your approximate uh, uh, place that you, you were raised linguistically. And uh, if you were at, my, uh, at the same floor level, I can tell your height. Uh, I can probably tell roughly your weight uh, just from uh, your, your heat, your the sound of your voice, the amount of pressure that you're making on the floor, depending on what kind of floor it is. Like if it's the stone out in the mess, I'm not going to get anything from that. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, blind people can be racist too, if, if that's what you're <laughs> thinking. Uh, everybody can be racist. We're all a little bit racist. Um, yeah, same way to anyone else. So we'll do one last question for microphone number two. That's center aisle. Okay. So thank you for your talk. I think that was very inspiring. Um, I was wondering, most of the message that you showed were rather analog. So have you also tried something like a, maybe a smart cane? So we have some more technical approach to detecting surfaces and obstacles or other things. Uh, and what's your experience yeah. Hopefully with this kind of thing? Hopefully my slide is, is still up there, where it says I'd be interested in collaborating on that. Um, uh, uh, Eric Boyd at uh, Sensebridge of, of Noisebridge, where I used to be, uh, made a nice anklet called the North Paw, um, which is basically a series of pager buzzers that vibrate to point to which way is north. Uh, I sadly broke mine, and if any of you have a working one, I would really like to have it. Uh, 
absolute orientation is really difficult. Um, so relative orientation, like what I was doing with the Aikido, I can tell like where someone is, I can f uh, focus on them, but then it's easy to lose track of which way you're facing. Um, so something like that is quite useful. There are some products that do this on demand. So um, I forget what it was called, but the uh, LHZ uh, Dresden had uh, this uh, product, which is a tactile feedback compass and clock. So it'll, if you click it and it'll, it'll vibrate in different ways to tell you like which way you're facing. Um, but that doesn't really work very well. Uh, what you would want is something continuous. I've heard of canes where they've like attached a camera to either the cane or to the, to the grip and it beeps or something uh, when there's something there. Um, I've never used one, uh, so I can't comment on that directly, but uh, from blind friends who've told me about experiences with them, they tend to be engineered by sighted people who have no idea what it's like to be blind. Uh, that said, it is true that tree branches are a real obstacle uh, because if I try to sweep something and something is above this height, right? Like a tree branch at about this height um, or a metal sign like in Boston or DC or New York or well, really anywhere in the US. Uh, uh, not so much in London, they're pretty good about that, except for the one time I walked into a government building and there was a monitor affixed to the wall at this height. Uh, I cleared the column, hit the column. I knew there was a column there and I was just walking past the column and walked smack into the monitor. Uh, this was in a government building, sadly. Uh, but usually they're pretty good about it and I haven't found any like that here. Um, but trees, there's always trees. Um, Bus stops uh, often have sort of the, the sign on, this, on, on the side, right? And there's like this gap that might be, say, this high. Uh, because I have a fairly long cane, uh, canes are usually anywhere between sternum and nose, and mine is sort of just at the edge of my nose if I'm standing up tall. Um, it's quite long because I walk really fast. Uh, so mine has a lower angle and that means that it's more likely to go under that and then I'll hit it like here when I'm almost at it, tangles up my cane, it's kind of a pain. Um, yeah, so uh, it's possible that something that detects uh, a higher range would be useful. One thing that I'm specifically interested in because uh, it's something I'm bad at is absolute orientation. So if you are an engineer, or a hacker who uh, is interested in uh, collaborating on something like um, putting, I don't know, putting little things in the king grip or in a hat or on uh, the side of eyeglasses or something like that um, that would tell me which way is north constantly, uh, please get in touch. Um, or for that matter, if you can make glasses that will take standard lenses and have zero light leakage, uh, please get in touch, because uh, turns out there aren't any such frames on the market for some reason. Um, that's a technology, but, um, uh, but it ain't there. So, so I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sai, for a very interesting talk. Big round of applause.